This is the beginning of the pipeline network. The dried gas comes in at a pressure of 66 bar. Via the mainline network, the gas is transported all over the Netherlands and to the frontiers. Pressures in this network range from 66 to 45 bar. At over 50 points, the measuring and regulating stations, the pressure is reduced to 40 bar to supply the regional network. Hasuni take advantage of the pressure drop at the measuring and regulating stations to subject the gas to a second drying process. Little or no heating is applied to the gas prior to its expansion at the station. The expansion causes the temperature of the gas to drop in winter, often to 0 degrees centigrade or even lower. The temperature drop gives rise to the formation of condensate mist. Measurements are performed to establish at what distance after the station the mist has precipitated in the pipeline. A probe is introduced into the transport pipeline and enables a slight volume of gas to flow to the measuring instruments. Such measurements have been carried out at increasing distances from the station, up to the point where the gas no longer contained any mist. The investigation has shown that the distance over which the mist precipitates downstream of the station ranges from 200 to 500 meters, depending on the pipeline diameter and the gas velocity. A liquid receiver installed in the pipeline at that point enables all the condensate form to be collected. What happens downstream of the station can be seen from the course of the condensation curve. Expansion to 40 bar causes the gas temperature to drop. This in turn gives rise to condensate in the form of a mist. When the condensate is separated from the gas stream, the dew point drops to far below the ground temperature at pipeline depth. This drying by expansion at the measuring and regulating stations is so effective that hardly any further condensate is likely to be formed further down the network. At low gas velocity, the condensate flows like a brook along the bottom of the pipe. This is stratified flow. When the gas velocity increases, wave flow occurs. At even higher gas velocities, the liquid begins to atomize. Ultimately, annular flow develops when the liquid flows as a film along the whole of the inner wall of the pipe. In 40 bar lines, this annular flow occurs at gas velocities in excess of 5 meters per second. In a lot of places, the gas pipelines dive under rivers and canals. At low gas velocity, liquid can accumulate in these crossings. In autumn, when the gas offtake rises, the gas velocities increase, creating conditions likely to give rise to liquid being blown out of these crossings in slugs. At gas velocities in excess of about 4 meters per second, the condensate flows through the crossing without any difficulty. Liquid is also likely to accumulate upstream of dike crossings and can then be carried along by the gas when its velocity increases. The regional network, which branches out at numerous points, starts at the measuring and regulating stations. How does a flow of condensate behave at a branch point? This is the model of a pipeline with a branch line. The gas stream comes from the left. The gas flow in the branch line is measured with the meter on the left. The meter on the right measures the gas flow in the straight through line. At this moment, the gas stream divides into two equal parts. It now appears that all of the liquid passes into the branch line. Next, we lower the gas flow entering the branch line to 30%. All of the liquid still continues to flow into the branch line. It's not until a small part of the gas stream passes into the branch line that liquid flows straight through. In most cases, the liquid flow does not divide at a branch point, but either goes straight on or into the branch. Hence, 
the liquid flow shows a distinct root preference. In this particular model, the branch line is of smaller diameter than the straight line. If the gas stream divides into two equal parts, the liquid flow will in this case also take the branch line. When the gas stream through the branch line is reduced, all the liquid will at a given moment go straight on. Root preference also occurs with complete annular flow. In view of the root preference mentioned, it follows that any condensate formed at the beginning of a regional pipeline network will generally flow to a single terminal branch of this network. It's possible to calculate to what offtake points the condensate is likely to be carried, where appropriate measures can then be taken. A special case of root preference occurs with large double underwater crossings. Each leg of the crossing carries 50% of the gas stream. Root preference causes the liquid to flow to the reserve leg where it accumulates. By closing off the straight through leg, the gas velocity in the parallel leg is doubled, thus causing the liquid present there to start moving. This is the pipeline situation at the inlet side of a gas delivery station. The gas comes from the left and divides over the meter runs. It appears that the liquid carried along accumulates at the last meter run. The liquid separator in this particular meter run is already half filled, while the liquid traps in the other two runs are still practically empty. The separator in this meter run must therefore be designed to handle all the liquid. 